Peace. Welcome back to the Voice of the Reason show. I'm your host, Skilo Slim, and today we got a very special guest in the building. I'm going to slide it to him so he can introduce himself. How you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh, Mike Hughes, uh, candidate for Douglas County Sheriff. And uh, we've been campaigning for about a year now. Uh, the election is November 6th. Yeah. So we're just uh, able to get our name out here and let people understand who we are. Right on, right yeah. on. See, that's a, that's a big thing, man, because I've been talking to people. I was telling them, like, I got you coming up to the show. And a lot of people said the same thing, like, they didn't know that you elect the sheriff. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so can you give us a little bit of your background to how you even got into this space? Absolutely. So uh, originally born and raised here in Omaha, graduated from Omaha Central. I okay. uh, went to UNO. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a minor in political science. So that's kind of where the... Uh, ambition spark for politics and I right. uh, have a master's degree in public administration from Columbia Southern University. Uh, while in college, uh, my, one of my best friends uh, tried to encourage me to join the military right. and uh, I had to take his perspective and the fact that I wanted to be in law enforcement um, to heart. So I joined the U.S. Army. Mm -hmm. uh, my service took me to Georgia, right outside Savannah, Georgia. I went to Afghanistan, did all that kind of stuff you read and hear about in the news. And then uh, after my service to the country, I uh, became a police officer in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, I was doing that. I did that for about four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can imagine, you know, taking people to jail. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it started to dawn on me, why am I taking young people to jail? You know, between that 12 and 24 age range. Right. And uh, I had to figure out what I could do to help young people. Uh, so I'm married, I have two kids, and uh, we decided to move back to Omaha where we're from and get in the community and affect change. And now I'm a career coach with Avenue Scholars Foundation, a okay. nonprofit, uh, working with young people from about 16 to 24. And uh, uh, we, st we give them a scholarship if they're successful in a high school program, and we provide scholarship, mentoring, guidance, counseling services for those students, and a full ride tuition at Metro Community College in hopes of helping those students break barriers to poverty. Yeah, that's dope. Absolutely. And then uh, how the sheriff's office came about, um, you know, when you sit down and you kind of dig deep in the weeds of things as far as politics, and we noticed that uh, the sheriff's race was has been uncompetitive for about 24 years. So really? our current sheriff has been in office for 24 years. Uh, he hasn't been able to campaign or do anything like that, so we're forcing his hand right now. Right. And I definitely think the climate that we have in the United States as far as law enforcement and the community, um, I just want to be a catalyst for change in that aspect. So. Um, that's why the position of sheriff, and once again, and it's an elected position, it's not like the chief of police where somebody is, appoints that person. Right. So it's definitely uh, the voters dictate who is the sheriff. Right, yeah. right. So what, what exactly is the role of the sheriff? Absolutely. So it's, it's complex, actually. Uh, the sheriff deals with uh, civil litigation. So um, let's say you, you get in a divorce or something like that. The sheriff delivers that documentation. The sheriff also deals with law enforcement. So they also uh, work with that capacity and they work in a correction sense in the fact that they deal with the courthouse. So okay. um, they have deputies that, you know, transport individuals from the court, from the jail to the courthouse and then protect the services in the courthouse for the judges and different things like that. So it's, it's a lot to it and uh, we know we have an uphill battle and we're willing to jump out there and, and put our, our necks on the line for, yeah. for change, you know, so. Definitely, definitely. So, so how do you see yourself affecting that office? Absolutely. Uh, well, we'll be the first uh, African American to run for sheriff in the state of Nebraska. The first? So, yeah, first. Wow. So obviously, if we win, we'll be the first sheriff in Nebraska that's African American, and just bringing that different perspective to it. Like I grew up in North Omaha, so I understand the dynamics of feeling like you're being targeted, feeling like uh, you're being harassed. So I definitely understand that capacity. And then being in law enforcement, I understand the other end of the spectrum, you know, where it's like, oh, well, I'm not harassing you. You have a traffic, you know, you yeah, committed you a traffic violation. So, right. um, and then I'm working with young people now, so I'm able to, I want to bridge all those elements together in hopes of bringing the best public safety to, to our citizens of Douglas County and then also improving those community relations. Right. I, I think that, that'll play a big part because, I mean, that's one of the hardest things for me, like growing up, it was like, I didn't really know anybody in law enforcement. Absolutely. So it's like I'm just seeing like people come into the community, whatever their role, whatever they're doing, you know, and then they leave. It's like I don't know them. When I got older, it's like I started having friends who were cops or mm -hmm. they worked in law enforcement and it changed my whole perspective. Absolutely. And that's the goal. Um, 
uh, the, the jurisdiction of the Douglas County Sheriff is, is the county. Um, but Omaha has its own police department, so the sheriff's office kind of stays away from city uh, incidents and city tactics, of, if, you, if you will. But um, I just plan on being working collaboratively with all our local law enforcement agencies so that young people growing up can understand, like, hey, I know Officer Hughes or I know right. Officer such and such, and, you know, he's, he's been in, them, in our community. He knows my mom. You know, right. if I have an issue, I can go talk to him about it rather than the, the opposite of don't talk to the police. Yeah. You know, you see the police, you run, you know. So right. um, I just want to just be a catalyst for that change and hopefully improve our communities. Yeah, yeah, that's an honorable thing, too. Man. Thank you. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm, I'm a big, I know a lot of people, you know, in the community, they don't really like law enforcement right. and all of that. Absolutely. But I would not want to live in a lawless state. Correct. Correct. You know, but then at the same, I mean, I just would like it to be like they do what they're supposed to do. You know, mm -hmm. like, you don't overstep. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big part is to get people like you that. And it's, other, it's a lot of people, majority, because I think majority of people in law enforcement are good, you know. So what, what do you think about the relations between law enforcement and Omaha citizens right now? Um, I, think, I think overall the tenor the, is good overall. I think specifically if we zero in on African American and brown and Hispanic communities, I think it's, it's tough. Um, uh, we just talked about some crime stats here maybe about four or five months ago that were released by the state of Nebraska where it showed that uh, specifically to the Douglas County Sheriff's Office that um, the population for African Americans in Douglas County is about 11 percent and they were pulling over almost 14 percent of their traffic stops were African American. So um, I think just focusing on those type of things where we're saying hey okay if 11% of our population is African American, then less than 11% of our traffic stops need to be African American. Right. Um, we need to be in the community hosting events. We need to be building those relationships with people, especially I think young people is most important. Um, there's a saying that uh, you really can't change a man, but you can you can build one as a right. youngster. You know, I so agree with that. Um, I definitely believe in getting to those young people early and showing them that law enforcement is positive, and then we have to create a positive culture in our communities to show that law enforcement is here to serve first and protect. Right, definitely, I definitely agree with that because it's not it's not really I don't know it's not I don't think that it's that bad mm -hmm. between. Cause I mean I got I get pulled over all the time and majority of the time the officers are courteous. Absolutely. Right you know it's like I don't have that issue. I know some people might have a different story or whatever, but I don't know what they do. So mm -hmm. you know, but I think that it's like a lot that we can build on here. Absolutely. By the way, that makes me think. Do they still do the weed and seed program? I don't know if that's like. Oh, uh, I wouldn't know. I okay, don't know yeah. about that. Right oh, that just yeah. came to my mind. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, but um, also I I know that um, I was at the. Uh, Young Black Influential Award. Yes, sir. And I seen that you were a, a recipient of that. Correct. How was that whole experience? Oh, uh, it was it was a great experience. Uh, shout out to Ashley Spivey and the Young Black Influential Awards. Um, it was it was great to be recognized in our community. A lot of the work that we do. Um, as far as community advocates and activists kind of goes unseen. Like I'm not yeah. one person to, um, like this is out of my character to be in a public eye and do different things like that. So I'm one to work behind the scenes. I don't need accolades or anything, but um, I'm very humbled and honored to, to have received that award. Um, just, just to be, once again, affecting change, man. I think it's huge uh, for us, uh, especially people of color, uh, to be at the forefront of some change. Right, right, definitely. It's a dope event. Yeah, I love I love being a part of it. You know, being there. I'm not really a part, but I'm there all the time. So what? Okay. So what do you? What would be something that you would change as sheriff? Like, do you see something that needs to be changed or? I, like honestly, I think so. We we're going to focus on three key issues as far as our campaign right now is increased collaboration. Uh, so I definitely believe that helping and working with other law enforcement agencies in our community, i.e., uh, Omaha Police, you got Ralston, you know, Sarpy County, you got different agencies that are in close proximity in our metro area. That if we work together, we can get we can achieve great things. Right. Um, so I definitely think that's that's number one. Uh, number two, I would say increasing our transparency. So when 
when events are happening. For instance, we had an officer-involved shooting here the other day with Omaha police. Um, just being transparent about those things and let the, the public, you know, public opinion take hold of those things and be factual and just release as much information you can without harming citizens or without harming your investigation. So I definitely think we're missing those things with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. And then lastly, uh, the community-oriented aspect. I think. Uh, being visible in our communities, engaging, you know, having back to school drives, handing out bikes, having, you know, races, you know, having right. kids, you know, race bike racing and just just being involved more in our community, um, I think will help bridge the gap between law enforcement and our communities. Right, right. And that's that's a big area that I think like the ball gets dropped, because if you talk to a little boy like between like four and eight, like you'll be surprised how many of them say they want to be a, like they Absolutely. want to be a cop. Absolutely. So then it's like from eight to teenage years, right. it's like what's <clears throat> happening. I think uh, I think it's family. I think it's um, birds of a feather. Right. <laughs> I think it's the mentality that. Um, brown and black people pass down to their kids is like hey when you see the police you know that's bad dudes you know yeah, don't talk yeah. to them don't do anything with them you know they're not here to help you different type of things like that so i definitely believe changing those mindsets is key um, as far as building relationships for generations to come because i think we're already behind the curve like well my generation maybe your generation and, di right, and different right. things like that but um the young kids like you said that 10 year old that that eight year old um, just being visible with them and letting them know like, yes, you can be a police officer. Yes, you can help people. And no, you know, you don't have to, you know, be part of these conversations and these stigmas because I think that's where it all starts is um, people have to separate themselves from the negativity and pursue their own dreams and passions. Right. I definitely agree with that. Like, make it cool to stand yeah, out. You absolutely. Know? Yeah. Like you, don't have to, you don't have to fall in with everybody else. Right, so. that's the main thing. Like, you don't have to be a follower. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, you do what you want to do. And that, that's what we always, like, I deal with a lot of youth, you know, kind of informally, though. Like, I pull up in the neighborhood, talk to them, and do all that. Like, let them know that they, I'm somebody they can come to if they need to, you know? And that's, like, the main, that's, like, what's missing, I feel like, mm -hmm. is that interaction. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, just different, seeing people doing different things. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, they might, it's a lot of kids, they've never met a black man like you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, they might not even know that you exist. Absolutely. So it's like, when they having these ideas and these thoughts, it's like, can I even do it? Like, um, we, had, uh, we had Richard come up here from, the, um, from 100 Black Men. Richard Webb, yeah. Yep, Great from guy. 100 Black Men. Yeah, real good mm -hmm. dude, man. There was a bunch of kids here that day. And when he was talking, doing the interview, and it was like, uh, after we was done, one of the uh, young brothers said to him, he told him that, like, he didn't even know that black men could be executives. Wow. Like, he didn't know that. So, like, he wanted to take a picture with him, like, wow. everything. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like that. And he was only here for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. you know? But that changed that kid's whole view. Absolutely. You know? So that's, like, that's my biggest, like, that's the, my, what was my question? Like, would you be willing to be engaged in the community? Because, like I said, I don't really know much about the sheriffs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that like I see them, like you said, Douglas County. Like I know once I pass a certain place, mm -hmm. okay, I'm like more likely to see a sheriff. Yeah, absolutely. I don't get warrants served. <laughs> right. And I see them at the courthouse. So right. I don't know like what's their role and what's the line, you know, like is that is that something that the sheriff would do? Well, the current sheriff and not to, you know, speak negatively, but it's just facts like they right now they're not focused on those type of things. So right. as sheriff, I would want to focus and bring those things to the forefront. So, so he that could do that. He could do that. He okay. could do he okay. could do whatever he wants. He's the top the office. Like you said, I don't <laughs> yeah. want to single him right. out, but right. that office exactly. Right. He's the top law enforcement official in the county, the sheriff is. Like okay. he's he uh, answers to the public and the board the uh, Douglas County Board of Directors, um, they oversee the budget and different things like that, but the sheriff, he can do anything he wants virtually in the county. Um, before I forget, I kind of want to uh, pass my inspiration for being a law enforcement officer off. Um, that was next. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so growing up, man, like I said, I grew up right there on 20th or Florence Boulevard and Lair Street right next to King Science Center. Okay. And, you know, I was between different viable gangs. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of violence and different things like that. And specifically, man, I was eight years old and uh, one of my cousins was at the house, man, and he went and, and robbed somebody for, for, some, for some drugs and ran to our house, man. And we didn't know what was going on. Hmm. Get a knock at the door. My mom opens the door. Boom. She shot in the face, bro. And uh, yeah, yeah, man, I had to 
performed CPR and didn't know what I was doing to my mom at eight years old. And the, the officers that arrived on scene, man, they took care of me. They, uh, they, they made sure I had shelter. They made sure my family was notified. They made sure that I, you know, was able to be with my mom at every step of the way. And from there, man, it, the passion kind of grew. And then uh, growing up, we used to be in the street playing football, basketball, doing different things, man. And officers got out their cars and challenged us. You know, it's like, what's up? What y'all want? You know, <laughs> yeah. let me see the pill, you know? So um, going through that, uh, and seeing what kind of positive impact that officers had on my life, I wanted to do the same thing. And I think a lot of people um, growing up in quote unquote poverty, they wanna deal with uh, like human service positions. They wanna work with people in the social work because somebody helped them in that field and they wanna give back. So um, that's my drive and ambition for wanting to be in law enforcement and separate myself and doing things different from everyone else. And then the sheriff's office, man, is just taking that leap to, for leadership and change and, and being a catalyst and an example, as you're saying, right. uh, to young people that it can be done. Right, right. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's a powerful story, man. Yeah. I never knew that. That that's that, that's and there's a lot of that in the community too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's a lot of that because I don't think that. I mean, it's funny to say, but being doing a show and then saying a lot of it is comes from media. Absolutely. But I mean, it's just I think that is because I don't think that the relations are as bad as it's put out there, you know. Because I like I when I was telling people like I talked to people like okay this is I got like I'm telling people I have you coming up on the show. Everything was positive. Absolutely. Everybody was positive about that. Like, no, nobody was like, oh, why are you doing that? Yeah. You know, like, nobody yeah. said that to me. Yeah. Like, so it's like, it's not, you know, it's, it's in the community. Like, people appreciate the service. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a bad treatment. Absolutely. That people have a problem with. And I don't know if, like I said, if the, fair, if the sheriff affects that or if that's more of an Omaha police I, thing. But I, It's both, man. <clears throat> it's both. It's, um, once again, it's law enforcement in the capacity of collaboration. And I think if we can sit down with Omaha <clears throat> and Ralston and Sarpy County and Bellevue and all these jurisdictions within the, the metro area and sit down and have an increased focus on building community efforts, I think it changes the dynamics of law enforcement. I think it helps us solve crimes. Like Kamisha Hollis has been missing for right. five, six months now. You know, we have unsolved murders in our community. And if you have a relationship, once again, with someone in law enforcement, you might not come out and say, hey, such and such did this, but you'd be like, hey, Mike, Officer Hughes or Sheriff Hughes, hey, I got this information, man, can you, can you come by the house or can you meet me at a you know undisclosed location or you know yeah. how, how can I help and I think when we can get there I think crime goes down I think we solve more crimes I think we have a better community that's flourishing um, <clears throat> there's a, a theory called the broken windows theory mm -hmm. and it's kind of like what the hunter black men say as well what they see what they'll what they see is what they'll be and I think our communities is, is the same tangent. So if you ride down your neighborhood and you see abandoned houses and broken windows and McDonald cups all over the place and we're not right. cleaning those things up, you know, people are gonna resort to violence because that's what they see. They, they see negativity, they see trauma, they see um, littering, they see damaged homes and, right. and it becomes natural. So nobody wants to change it. So we have to take it upon ourselves as in the brown and black community to say, we're no longer gonna tolerate these things. And I think the same is with law enforcement. Like uh, we're not gonna tolerate, you know, um, the lack of transparency. We're not going to tolerate you not being on our communities. Don't come around our communities only when something bad happens. I need to right. know you on a first name basis. Right. So that, that, will, that those will be some things that I want to see changed. Okay, definitely, definitely. That's 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 good. That's what I what I was hoping to hear. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, Absolutely. you know, I kind of had an idea because I you know I pay attention and everybody was telling me like you was a real good dude, but we didn't ever know each other personally. Absolutely. So I was kind of trying to decide too because you know I vote too. So I'm yes. like okay. I don't want to just vote just because, you know, yes. but that's 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 where my heart is because I mean, I love the community, you know, and I know that most people don't want to live in a, you know, crime infested Absolutely. area. You can't flourish like that, you know, and you don't and everyone has lost people and you know, it's like a, just an atmosphere right now that people want something to change. And you know, they want across the board everybody wants a better life, you know, mm -hmm. like the same things that anybody will want. So, you know, and I think that law enforcement is definitely a big part of that. Not only, like, it's not their responsibility, I feel, to necessarily clean up the neighborhoods, right. but to be a partner 
Correct. You know, instead of, and I think that this is, I think that Omaha's taking good steps in that direction, you know? And I feel like you will be a good part of that right now. So what could people do to help you reach your goal? Man, a lot, <laughs> a lot. So um, like I said, we've been going for about a year now as far as campaigning. Uh, we need volunteers, we need donations, we need word of mouth, Facebook shares, Twitter shares, um, talking amongst each other in the community. Uh, most importantly, getting registered to vote. Um, right. I think that dynamic is huge. Uh, we are uh, active on social media on Facebook. We're at Mike Hughes for Sheriff. Um, Twitter, we're at Sheriff, under, sh at Sheriff underscore Hughes. Uh, we have a website at HughesforSheriff.com. Um, just, just become active in the political process. I think those things are dynamic. Um, <clears throat> people are creating laws and different things like that. Um, in Lincoln, for, in the governor's office, and nobody, um, there's not too many diverse situations in those offices. So who's speaking? Um, for, for minorities. So right. uh, once again, this is just a being, trying to be impactful and affect change. Definitely. And, that, and that's the way that I see it as well because, I mean, like, who's looking out for a working common man, right. you know? That's the thing. Like, <clears throat> you know, like, I, I mean, I, I, naturally I'm a black man, so I see it from that perspective. But when you widen the scope, it's like, who's looking out for working people? Like you got a lot of these people are very wealthy that's in these positions, like the governor's office. And it's like, and it, he, can't, he can't connect to me. He don't know my struggle, you know? So it's very, like you said, it's very important to have diversity in those areas because that's what I see a lot of times. It's like when I listen to what people say and the stuff that they're doing, it's like, that's not realistic. Right. Like what you're right. saying that this person needs to do to change their life, how are they gonna do that? Right. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's hard to work. You know, I know I know guys that got two jobs. You know, like they 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 should be retired. Right. And they work two jobs to support their family. So it's like, do you care about what happens to him? And it's like, I just I don't know. I'm not sure if they do or not, or if they just don't know how to. So like you said, it's important to have diversity. To ask somebody else that's going to be there, like, hold on, wait a minute. Absolutely. Yes. Like if you cut that bus line. Absolutely. Like how's he going to get to work? You know, yeah. like you talking to a person who's always had a car like yep. he doesn't understand what it's like to ride the bus you know so it's like that that that's why i think that that's important and um uh, okay so yeah is there anything that you would want to say to anybody watching right now this would be a, let them know how they could get in touch with you and absolutely uh, the first most important thing is to just get involved in the political process um, I definitely think as we're talking about now that uh, being in politics and having a voice and a seat at the table is very important to affect change. And once again, uh, if you want any information about politics or how to get involved or um, once again to learn more, you can contact me directly. Um, I have a personal Facebook, Mike Hughes. I have our campaign is Mike Hughes for Sheriff. Uh, you can send me a D direct message. Um, you can contact me. I'm very responsive, very receptive to that information. Uh, you can also check more about me and read on our bio and what we're trying to do as far as to a further extent at HughesForSheriff.com. That's HughesForSheriff.com. Uh, we're door knocking. We're going through communities, knocking on doors. You'll be seeing yard signs here popping up. Uh, we're calling people um, every Wednesday night at the Kumani Center right there on 30th and Ames. Um, and we just want to impact change. So once again, um, be a part of political processes. Be mm -hmm. a part of political processes. These are how laws are created that affect your daily life. Definitely, that's great, man. Well, I want to say thank you, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you yes, coming sir. out, man, and spending this, because uh, it's a Saturday morning. The show come on on uh, Monday. Okay, on Monday. Yeah, so everybody, but everybody don't understand, man, it's, it's big to me that somebody give up their Saturday morning. Yeah. To come through so like Absolutely. we really appreciate it you know what i'm saying and uh like you said it all like like you said man get involved man people please get involved in the political process because i'm, I'm gonna be honest i'm tired of seeing people on facebook talking about voting does not matter now if you don't want to vote for president yeah yeah let me get a close up bro thank you if you don't if you don't want to vote for president that's fine but sheriff judges like city council all of those things affect your life every day. They affect my life. So I don't want to see, if, let's put our best foot forward and get out and vote. And if it doesn't work out then, we can go from there. But how are you going to hold somebody accountable 
when you don't even vote. Mm. And you're teaching that to the babies. Mm. And I, you know, I just have to say it because that's what we do here. So I'm going to say that I support my brother Mike Hughes right here for sheriff. This Thank is you. like my second time talking with you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm definitely on board for that. So you make your decision. Like he, he gave you the information. Go look it up. Don't just do it because I said it. Go and look it up and make sure that that's what you were part of and that's what you want to see. And then, um, yeah, get out here and vote. Man, that's real big. And uh, with that, I'm going to say peace until next time. Right on. Thanks, man. Man, thank you.